Kimmy, are those butt implants? My car history and my history in general is just terrible. I am the exact opposite of Ed here. I am the most unshrewd negotiator, the worst car buyer you've ever met. And my YouTube channel may look pretty successful on the surface where I get so many views and, and obviously that brings money, but I lose my ass on these cars. It's just a stream of fails. And I've discovered the bigger the fail, the more views that it gets. So it's it's a really horrible cycle. And, and my car history is just filled with it. And I can't remember the cars because there's been so many at this point. I buy a car about every month now, which is terrible. So, oh, no, 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 no. It's playing an ad with my Ferrari catching fire. That's, we'll come to that later. All right, we'll start with the 1999 Porsche 911. The cheapest Porsche 911 with a manual transmission, a coupe in the United States at the time, it was $9,500, sounds pretty good, except it had 243,000 miles on it. And I called the mechanic shop that had done a lot of the work to it over the years. It was a one owner car, actually. It was a dealer selling it. And he told me not to buy it because the engine was starting to sound worn out. And I, I bought it anyway. It lasted six months, which was really good. It was actually really a solid car. I drove it to Florida and back from Kansas. Uh, to Amelia Island, no problems. It used about a quart every thousand miles. It sounded a little, a little, little rattly, but you know that's. I mean, all Porsches kind of sound broken at idle. It's it, now the turbo that I have now sounds really broken at idle, and that that Mesger engine that's that's just normal. But anyway, where I killed it was on the track. I went flat out trying to chase down a Golf R and completely blew the engine. And then I thought it would be a good idea to swap in an LS. V8, because that's a cheaper engine, right? Well, it's not. It's $10,000 to rebuild the Porsche engine, $17,000 by the time I was done with this LS swap, putting it in on a car I paid $9,500 for and probably put three or $4,000 into to fix. And that lasted a year. I blew the motor again on the track, the LS engine that's not supposed to blow. So maybe, might be pilot error there that might be blowing things up. I'm, I'm not gonna admit to that quite yet, because, but it's probably pilot error, so. Yeah, that car I sold for $10,000. And if you're doing math, that's well over $30,000 invested. So that's my first YouTube car and I lost $20,000 on that one. The next one is a 1978 Lincoln Continental Coupe. And I bought it from a guy in Las Vegas who owned a body restoration shop kind of thing. And he said the car had no rust, no problems at all. And I had a friend who lived in Vegas go look at it. He had rust where they like to do around the Lando top all the way around bubbling up. And he didn't tell me about that. It's so obvious. But his approach to it was like, oh, I'll fix it for you and then keep the same price. So he fixed it. It showed up. It actually caught fire within two hours of it arriving. Completely burned. It didn't like burn the whole car down. But the engine bay was trashed. The ignition, the carburetor, all that stuff had to be completely redone. His solution was to send me uh, spark plug wires and the distributor to make it all right, but I got the car. Constantly broke. The paint repair he did started bubbling within a month again. It was a really bad repair. And I sold it for a $6,000 loss about eight months later, so not as bad as the Porsche. But then I wasn't really paying attention to who bought it. I listed it on eBay, I think, and the guy was going to fly out and drive it back to Michigan. He was flying from Las Vegas. And for some reason I didn't make the connection and he didn't make the connection until he showed up that it was the man who sold it to me who was flying out to buy it again. And he didn't know, or claimed he didn't know, and I didn't know until we were there and he was looking at the car and I think, I think I've, I've had this car before. And I was like, it's you. So it was a really awkward, quiet couple of hours until he left with the car and he said he was going to take it to Michigan to give to his dad. Oh yeah, I lifted a... Dodge Grand Caravan, all track, all wheel drive. Spent probably two or three grand making that thing into an off-roader that it was never going to be. Then sold it for two grand after paying $2,500 for it. So that's their $5,000 loss. Oh man. Yeah, the S600, that wasn't too bad. I bought that for $4,500 with a blown motor, 2007 S600. I found a motor for $4,500. Spent probably another $4,500 swapping it in. And it's running, it really didn't need that much after that. Sold it to Varsh for 12,000. So how much is that? That's only a two or $3,000 loss. That's not bad. 
That's not bad at all. Yeah, a $500 Lincoln Town Car that I spent $2,000 on, and then I gave it away, so that's $2,500 loss. Oh, yeah, how can you lose buying a $300 Jeep Cherokee? You, you can't, you really can't, but I did, because I bought it, it had 360,000 miles on it, blew its head gasket on a ski mountain, and then I lifted it, put tires on it, and all that stuff, probably had four or $5,000 into it, and sold it for $2,500. I, I was a car dealer before this, so you can see why the car dealership failed. This, these are just YouTube cars. Oh, yeah, my Mercedes ML55 AMG. I had a 2000 Mercedes ML55 AMG. Beautiful car. It was, it was, it was a Merlot, or what they call it? It was, it's brown. It was brown. And I had it sold for basically what I paid for it. I was getting it detailed for the guy who was buying it, and it got stolen out of the detail shop and went on a couple of high-speed chases and was eventually ditched in a field. They actually used it as a bulldozer to knock over trees about that thick and it made a surprisingly good bulldozer. Just plowed it in there, hit it there. It was missing for a few days because uh, it was buried in there pretty good. Pulled it out. It was actually in pretty good shape. I was really surprised. It was just kind of scratched up and I sold it for I think $2,500 less just because it was so scratched up and now it had this history with it and I actually sold it to a guy that's bought multiple cars from me and you might be able to see it on NCIS New Orleans apparently it gets all of its windows shot out it's like a bad guy's car so uh, watch for that um, 2004 Cayenne Turbo that was about a five thousand where are we gonna end with this because it just keeps going forever I bought a 1983 Chrysler LeBaron town and country Mark Cross edition beautiful teak wood panels, the nice leather interior. I always wanted one. They also have the talking car features, the same sound as the speak and spell, you know, where, where you push the button, your, your door is ajar, that, that kind of thing. And there was a guy that was selling 22 of them. He had 22, that was his entire collection of just these LeBarons. And I called him and I said, I wanted one with no rust. No rust, just send me one with no rust. And he said, okay, I've got three. Pick one of these three, this is the nicest one. I'll take it. I send him the money. He calls me once he gets the check. And he says, hey, I looked at this car with another guy who was looking at one of my cars and I noticed it had a little bit of rust on the floor and a few little bubbles here and there. And I was like, well, I wanted a car with no rust. And he said, well, you already sent the check and I told you you should have come looked at these before you sent the money. So you should just take this car anyway. It's a good car. I was like, okay. So I should, the car shows up and the hole in the floor behind the driver's seat is about this big. I can, I can double fisted, which I, that, that looks bad. Uh, but it, it was a big hole. And there was a hole, of course, in the standard around the pedals. Every panel had rust on it. It was a total mess. It wasn't worth fixing. And it was so bad that I asked my mechanic to dig a hole on his property. And I drove into the hole and we buried it. We're about to dig it up, actually. So, and we'll dig it up and see if it starts. So I tried to make my money back on the YouTube ad revenue. $2,500 plus $1,000 to ship it here, which is ridiculous. I shouldn't have done that. And then buried it. So that's that's zero. Zero. And that's, boy, if we total that up, was that about thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 just over the course of a year and a loss? And I almost did that with one car, and that was a 2005 Bentley Continental GT, which is famous for totaling itself just through mechanical issues. And I bought this car because I still have a dealer connection, I'm able to go on to dealer wholesale, it's called OVE, a wholesale network, and buy the car, and it was a great price, and you could click and order a PSI on it, so I thought I was good. I actually talked to the seller and said I was going to PSI, and he said, okay, we'll see what pops up in the PSI, but I think he knew that Bentleys were ineligible for post-sale inspections, and he was talking it up and, and knew that I was totally hanging myself. This, this car showed up and it was so bad. It looked so nice on the surface, but it was so far gone. Really almost nothing worked. It barely drove. And then I did a little bit of digging. I kind of glanced at the Carfax, but didn't look through it all. And there was a little note where it said, exported to Finland in 2008. And I've come to discover Finland is used as a front to send cars to Russia. And the car spent 10 years in Russia. When you Google the VIN, it pops up on all the Russian sites. I had Freddy, who speaks Russian, Tavares Hernandez, but he understands Russian. We, we don't know what 
what Freddie's background is, but it's he's he's an interesting guy. And he told me it had been seized by the Russian government at one point and had at least two odometer rollbacks. The car has about 150,000 miles on it. He told me all this before he actually bought it because there's only one person dumber than me to actually buy that car and that was Freddie Tavares on YouTube. So he bought that car and uh, I sold it for $12,000. I paid $28,000 on it and spent probably three or four grand in a little exploratory surgery to just see if I could fix it and no, no. Yeah, that was bad. And I guess the last car, and I, it's not really a loss, but it's related because Freddie bought it also. My 1995 Ferrari F355. And this was traded, I actually traded my Acura NSX for it that I was about $50,000 into and traded it plus $10,000 cash on a Ferrari worth about probably $40,000 because I'm a shrewd negotiator. Yeah. And uh, it didn't run. Didn't run, had a coolant issue where it busted its uh, heat exchanger hose and that got fixed and actually ran great. It ran great for months. I put over a thousand miles on it, then shipped it to California and it rather famously now burned to the ground, just exploded, burned this guy's camera guy that was driving it, another YouTuber uh, named Vehicle Versions, Parker. And that one I actually didn't lose money because of the insurance, but it's still a very big fail. So this, this my whole YouTube channel is built on documenting my failures and how big of a moron that I am. I'd like to thank the guys at Avalon King for supporting the channel this month. If you want to try it out yourself, there's a link in the description below.